Hi, it's Handy Andy Tech Tips here. Microsoft has just released the first official Windows 11 Insider Preview, build 22000.51, and I'm currently running it on a PC with a TPM 1.2 chip. Now, Microsoft's official requirements specify TPM 2.0 and an 8th generation Intel processor. But this PC only has a 3rd gen Ivy Bridge CPU, a Core i7-3520M. And Windows 11 seems to work okay, with some minor bugs as you'll see later. To install it, I didn't need to do any unofficial workarounds. I simply signed up to the Windows Insider program with my Microsoft account. Of course, this is no guarantee that the final release of the OS will support this hardware, far from it. But for now, it's working, so let's explore some of the new features. Probably the most obvious change is the fact that the taskbar icons are now center aligned, a bit like the OS X dock. The start menu also has a new look. The live tiles are gone, thank goodness, and they've been replaced by some pinned apps and a selection of recommended files. Clicking on all apps in the top right corner gives you an alphabetical list of your programs. As someone who hated the Windows 10 start menu, I think this redesign is a very welcome improvement. It's so good that I might be able to ditch OpenShell, a start menu replacement which I've been using for several years. Now, if you don't like the center aligned taskbar icons, you can always go into the settings app and move them back to the left. But once I got used to it, I found the new UI to be quite aesthetically pleasing. So I'll leave it as is. Talking about settings, it's also had a facelift. The categories, which were represented by these large buttons in Windows 10, have now been moved into a column on the left side, with subcategories and individual settings appearing on the right. This makes better use of screen real estate, especially for mouse users. Unfortunately, the duplication of settings between the new WinUI settings app and the legacy control panel is still an issue. You can see that I can either set the date and time through this interface, or that one. It's a bit weird having settings in two places at once, and I hope Microsoft can eventually eliminate the classic control panel altogether. Elsewhere in the system, File Explorer looks very different. The ribbon interface, present since Windows 8, has been replaced by this sleek series of icons. Although it may look good, many of the more advanced options are now hidden away in sub-menus and dialogues, which I'm not a fan of and there's some bizarre changes that may break people's workflows. For instance, imagine that I want to copy this folder. I can just right click on it and there we go, copy as path, right? Well, no, that just copies the path to the folder as a string. If you want to copy the contents of the folder, you need to click on the little copy icon at the top of the menu. Now that's a little bit strange. In terms of the Microsoft Store, it doesn't look like much has changed. There's no Android apps in there, for example, and those will reportedly be coming in a future build. Should be interesting to see how well they work. Now, remember how I said that there were some bugs, probably with my hardware? This is one of them. Clicking on this icon should show the widgets, but there are none here. However, if I mouse over, you can see that some of the tool tips are showing up. And if I click on one of these things, it opens a website in Edge. So obviously the widgets are there, but they just don't display correctly. Maybe this problem will be corrected in a future release, but considering my unsupported hardware, probably not. And that's about where we're going to wrap this one up. I hope you enjoyed this tour of Windows 11, and if you did, please subscribe to Handy Andy Tech Tips. I'll see you in the next video.